I will chain you to the guardrail. <laughs> Those guys, the cellos are warming up. They're going to be what? playing Why us out. There... No, never mind. Go ahead. Continue. This is the Titanic, and I'm taking you with me. Uh, the award-winning Titanic. The award-winning Titanic. The award-winning Titanic. <laughs> I don't think you need that one. Yes. Oh, that's my new win of the week. The award-winning <laughs> Titanic. All right, everybody, welcome to the FTW Podcast, the wrestling world in all its laughable glory. Tonight is episode number 146 and was recorded live on January 8th, 2013 on FTWlive.com. Uh, tonight's uh, New Year's Eve uh, resolution light friendly episode, uh, we're all on a diet, is uh, uh, just the three of us, actually. I'm Harrison. With me, as always, is Rob. Say hello, Rob. Hey. And Garvin is here. Say hello, Garvin. Hey. Uh, tonight, we're going to talk uh, basically the first Raw of 2013, the return of The Rock that night, uh, Hogan's Championship Deluge, let's say, aspirations, and uh, this Sunday's Genesis. If you're listening through iTunes, YouTube, or through your favorite podcast player, make sure to check out fcwpodcast.com for more about us and how to get involved in upcoming discussions. You can also find us on Twitter, Google+, Plus, and Facebook. All those links are listed right there at ftwpodcast.com. For those of you guys listening live tonight, ftwlive.com. Glad you can make it. Live chat hooligans in full effect. First off, at the tip of the show, uh, we have uh, some news. First up, we got a new site. Head on over to ftwpodcast.com and check it out. Garvin did a fantastic job on it. Was well, some added functionality for you guys. We have the ability to contact, uh, comment on past episodes, which some of you have already taken advantage of. Thank you. You can listen to each episode right now from the site. Uh, you don't need to download it if you just want to get a quick fix. It's pretty sweet. Uh, also, we're going to be posting some better show notes. Uh, right now, everything we talk about, well, basically what we're going to be doing is everything we talk about in uh, the post, everything we talk about will be in the post. It won't just be a brief summary. So there'll be links to the news pieces that we're talking about, uh, things like that. So if you want to check out um, the Ask FDW questions they received, they'll all be right there too. Uh, and we have a whole new mobile experience. Uh, so basically it's easier to get around the site now when you're on a handheld device like an iPhone or Android or a Windows phone or the Blackberry if for some reason you hate yourself. Uh, but anyway, uh, if you're looking to... Uh, can't believe I'm going to do this, Garvin. If you're looking to upgrade your website, head, uh, uh, get your set on a WordPress or even start a new project, you can contact our illustrious uh, web guru, Garvin, at garvin at ftwpodcast.com. I can't believe I'm shilling for you right now. FTW Draft News. Uh, as part of the new site, there is a new ftwdraft.com area. Uh, we've also got some news up there, and the new season of participants has been announced, so here's what's going to be involved. From the last season, we have the five of us, uh, Joe, me, Lee, Rob, and Garvin, uh, Ken, uh, Mike, David, Jill. These are all people who are locked in and have their spots uh, thanks to their playoff appearances. From Twitter, we got the Kilo G and Styles Clash. And from Facebook, we got Gary A and Nick A, not related. Uh, if you go to FDWDraft.com, tomorrow afternoon we'll be releasing the official draft order. I'm not sure exactly what time, so check like around like 4-ish, I'd imagine. Right, buddy? Right around there? Yeah, that's probably a good time. That sounds time. about right. Yeah, uh, since we went from 16 to 12 participants and brought in four new participants on top of everybody else that we had, we had to shuffle the order around a bit, so we'll have the draft order then. Expect that right around there. Also, we have new t-shirts. It's been a year or so ago since uh, we released our first land of t-shirts. We're going to archive those and bring in a new set. If you're friends with us on G+, Twitter, or Facebook, you've already gotten a sneak, pink, um, sneak, sorry, sneak peek. Uh, the new t-shirt line should be live uh, sometime next week. Uh, Google+, Plus. if you're actually on Google+, Plus, like me and Garvin and maybe six other people who work for Google, uh, you may have noticed that there are now communities available to their users. We created one just for WWE and TNA fans. With over 100 users, this community is already the largest and most active English-speaking professional wrestling community on G+. I don't know what the biggest one is because I can't understand the language. So go team. <laughs> you can head on over to fdwpodcast.com. We've linked to it in the footer. <laughs> I think it's Portuguese, so I think it's either probably Brazil because they rolled Orcut in the G+, I think. Anyway, uh, also, 
Big news, uh, Universal Takeover Awards. As we've probably made it very clear over the last 30 days on our social media accounts, we were up for the best wrestling podcast from the Universal Takeover Network. Their official award ceremony is happening right now at utnsports.com. Their show is partially taped, so when we're announced, if, I'm sorry, if we're announced as the best wrestling podcast in the world, um, they're just going to play our acceptance speech. If that happens, we'll let you know. Uh, either way, we're up against some really good discussions. we got Wrestling Soup, who were uh, up for a Stitcher Award a few years ago over in LA uh, single leg takedown future endeavors some really good stuff that we're I mean we're we're, uh, we're with esteemed colleagues here a lot of people say it's just an honor to be nominated but really when you review porn movies and make dick jokes on Tuesdays we really mean it when we say that Garvin's watching Twitter so if it's announced while we're live tonight we'll definitely let you guys know all right enough about us let's get started with TNA Rob first thing on TNA how about this? We did our look back uh, last week and, on TNA, and we picked who we thought was the standout wrestler. And at no point did we pick the right one, apparently, because according to TNA, the Impact Wrestler of the Year chosen by the fans is Jeff Hardy. Well, yeah, and this is the this is the good thing and the the bad thing about letting your fans pick the uh, um, pick who's going to be the wrestler of the year. Um, Jeff Hardy has a huge fan base. Uh, they obviously turned out. Um, James Storm, I, I would have thought, had a, a good fan base. I mean, you could make cases for just about anybody on the list. Jeff Hardy, James Storm, Austin Aries, Bully Ray, Bobby Roode. You could make a strong case for any of them. Um, Except for Hardy. Personally, <laughs> yeah. Except Jeff Hardy, yes. Uh, but when TNA pushes him and uh, has an album out, they've actually, I, I actually realized that I was wrong when I counted out how many of his songs on his new album um, that people have heard before. Open Fight Night's theme is actually one of Jeff Hardy's. They actually took the songs from one of Jeff Hardy's album and made it the theme for Open Fight Night. Really? Yes. That's well. How much was the how much was the album? Eight dollars. Uh, yeah, seven ninety nine. I think it is. Ooh, boo! Who lost capitalism? Yeah. All right. Predicted that right. Uh, well, I guess that's money well spent. Uh, here's the thing, though, Rob. Uh, first off, your attack against democracy, I do not appreciate. Uh, that aside, uh, I really would have thought. I mean, yeah, Jeff Hardy was gonna win, but. James Storm, I would have picked Bully Ray, if only for the longevity of it and for the legions of ECW fans, what everybody keeps saying, are still around. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Go figure. Bull Bully Ray, I expected to have a strong shot at it. Me, personally, I voted for Austin Aries, but uh, that's just because, you know, when you have him come in and he takes uh, the X Division title, never loses the title, trades it in, wins the world title, and gets into the main event when nobody thought he could. Oh, Bully he Ray uh, is right up there with Austin Aries. I got a question, I mean, Rob. We knew he was going to be in the main event. <laughs> we, we, we brought him up to the aisle. We took out our FDW sword, and we knighted him as the future this, of uh, as the future true. TNA. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, this is true. Uh, Bully Ray, you know, really kind of in the same category as Austin Aries, you know. Yeah. People thought when the team broke up, uh, you know, nobody expected much from Bully Ray. And for the first few months, he didn't give you a reason to expect anything from you. And then just all of a sudden, he's like, you know what? Fuck this. I'm going to be a singles wrestler. Yeah. And just yeah, bam. Out of nowhere. Uh, okay, so then uh, basically, you know, the culmination of this, because I want to talk about this because it has implications for Genesis, is uh, Hardy. Uh, Got the award, Rude and Ari. Basically, it came down to Rude and Aries, uh, and Hardy got into a scuffle, and so Hardy challenged them both to a title match at Genesis. So now we have a three-way uh, bout for the uh, strap at uh, for the TNA title at Genesis uh, this Sunday. So my question for you, uh, Rob, is uh, do you really see Jeff Hardy losing that, or do you think him winning it kind of cements the fact that he won this award? It's kind of like the stamp. Uh... I'd like to pick against him, but given the fact, given how much TNA seems to be pushing his album, given the fact that they gave him the Impact Wrestler of the Year, 
I, I, I think they're going to have him keep it at least in Genesis. Um, my only problem with that is if he comes out of the triple threat match, still the champion, you're giving him a huge push. Who then do you have as a credible challenger to him? Garf? Um, we'll go more in depth in this uh, when we get into Genesis, but I do want to say that this is probably the best opportunity that they have to still push him hard yet take the title off of him because it's a triple threat match. There's there's a lot of storyline opportunities where someone's going to cheat to win or, you know, distract uh, distract Hardy and pin someone else. Cause I, oh, no, I'm sorry. It's, a, it's elimination style, right, Rob? I'm yes. I'm trying to remember, remember now. Uh, Hogan did mention that it would be elimination style. So the last man standing. Right. Uh, yeah. I, I still I still think that the, that the but, better opportunities here to take the title off him than in a regular singles match. And if it was a regular singles match, I'd say no, the title's going to stay on him. But uh, but I that I being know. said, uh, I, I've had I, I I've seen multi person matches before where Hogan has said it's going to be elimination style, and then it turns out not. That's so true. we're having well, to wait like, until no, yeah, Genesis it, it, to see. Yeah, it's exactly how you say that what you serve in Chicago is pizza when you say Chicago style, but it isn't. It's just a hot mess of toppings on top of a piece of bread the size of my shoe. You, you call that what? pizza, which isn't really pizza. It's something, but I don't know what the hell it is. It's bread, apparently, with toppings. Do you have any... hey, Rob, I don't want to derail the show with your constant ramblings about Chicago style pizza. So, no, I'm just kidding, buddy. No, no, Rob, guys, I, come on. Jeff Hardy just won the Impact Wrestler of the Year award. Are you really going to tell me he's going to drop the strap one, two, three, four days later? I don't care who he's facing. He could be facing Hogan himself. He's not losing that belt. Oh, if he's no. facing Hogan himself, you know he's losing. Hogan never loses, yes. especially uh, when okay. he's in charge. Hi- hyperbole got away from me. He could be facing anybody, <laughs> aside from yeah, Hogan. No. I'm not, I'm not. I'm not necessarily play. saying that it will happen or that you know there's a good shot at taking the title off. I just say, in this scenario, this is the best scenario for that kind of opening. But no, I don't think the title's coming off of Hardy. It's too soon, way too soon, especially now that he is, you know, the Impact Wrestler of the Year. Yeah, you got to ride that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a T-shirt right there, especially with his face on it. Hell yeah, and his name. It's going to sell like crazy. All right, uh, okay, so the other thing I wanted to talk about was the continuation of Joseph Park. Uh, this is something that we've talked about a lot that we'd like to see, especially, you know, with us and uh, the conversations that we've had on social media about uh, possibly maybe not abandoning Joseph Park altogether, but kind of abandoning Joseph Park altogether to bring back up this. Do you see this happening at all, or do you see that they're going to keep pushing, especially with this video segment, uh, with Joseph Park? Uh. I think they're going to keep pushing Joseph Park, um, which is irritating because what what they're doing right now is they're trying to have their cake and eat it too. They're trying to push Joseph Park, but then they have glimpses of him using Abyss's moveset. Like, you know, uh, Joseph Park gets hit and starts bleeding, and he goes crazy and hits people with a black hole slam. Um it it i tna really needs to pick one side and stick with it um what i'd like to see them do if you're going to show the ovw videos for like joseph park and everything show them with the uh gut check winners too oh that's a really good idea show show the talent guy uh let let the talent coach from ovw let him give the fans of TNA his impression of the gut check winners. Do they have talent? How soon until we might see them in TNA? There's a lot of stuff you could be doing with these OVW segment segments. Okay, maybe this is just a way to tease into it because if you just drop the name, well, let's face it, if you just drop the name OVW a month ago, no one would know what you're talking about. Well, I mean, probably the vast majority of TNA's audience would have no idea what you're talking about. So the fact that you're kind of saying, well, Joseph Parks and OVW, it's developmental, you know, da 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 da, they're kind of linking that storyline to it. But I really like that idea, Rob, of using this as an avenue to kind of remind us, hey, remember these gut check guys? <laughs> <laughs> they're still around. Okay, so we got Bully Ray. We got him suspended uh, because of his involvement with Brooke. I mean, I guess 
I'll make the joke. You know what? I'll make the joke. I'll make the joke for Joe. I guess uh, Hogan got jealous that someone else was tapping his daughter. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. There you go, Joe. There. <laughs> you may not be here, but your crassless humor is. Uh, there. So, he, I mean, what, what do you think about this, Rob? I mean, uh, I don't know where the hell they're going with this storyline, but uh, it. This is another storyline that even worse than Aces and Eights look, looks like they're making it up as they go along. I mean, yeah. okay, so he suspends Bully Ray indefinitely without pay, and then he tells Brooke Hogan that she made her choice, go live with it. So what? Daddy's kicking her out of the house? What the hell's going on there? It... It makes no sense. There's really, there's a there's a really annoying soap opera aspect to it. Um, made even more so because, just like the Claire Lynch storyline, it's not going anywhere and it's taking painfully too long to get to some sort of resolution. Okay, uh, because John B. wrote on Facebook saying, uh, I think Hogan and Bully are actually working together in hopes of getting Bully inside Aces and Aids. So what do you think about the idea of B-Ray being like a Team 3 d bull agent? If that's where they're trying to go with it, that could be, that could be very interesting. That could be uh, an interesting twist. I kind of think that's what... I, I, I kind of had the thought that that might be what they're doing with Mr. Anderson because oh. Anderson did not take part in the attack. True. Uh, he, he just stood there watching aces and eights brawl and everything. Mm -hmm. He, he was deliberately kind of stalling whether or not to make his decision, um, taking up aces and eights time and, and, and such. Mm -hmm. I, I, I kind of saw him. I was kind of hoping when I saw that, like, okay, Maybe Sting is going to use Mr. Anderson as kind of like uh, a, a way into Aces and Eights and start trying to take them apart from the inside out. Hmm. Okay, so I mean the, the avenue is there. So would you okay? Would you rather have Bully Ray or would you rather have Anderson do it? Either one is fine with me. Bully Ray would Bully Ray would probably be Bully Ray would probably be more believable. Especially okay. with the brook and storyline going on with him, and you know, there's there's a chance to see Team 3D again. True, true. Even if they are the bad guys. Yeah. yeah. Garf, what do you got? Yeah, I I just want to say I think the theory that that John B uh, posted uh, is fantastic. The idea that they're that Bully and Hogan are working together to get inside of Aces and Eights. It would make total sense, um, and it would make this whole story worthwhile, I think, because it, I mean, there would be an, an actual point other than the other expectation, which would be Hogan versus Hulk Hogan. I mean, what, what other option do they have at this point? Right. Uh, that, that's a good call, Garvin. Um, you know, if, if Hogan and Bully Ray are kind of working together to, to help Bully Ray infiltrate Aces and Eights to do some damage from the inside that would actually make the Brook Bully Ray, Hulk Hogan storyline worth watching. Yeah, it would make it not suck, basically. As long as it doesn't end in a wedding, we're okay. <laughs> yeah, because wrestling, wrestling weddings never end well. Edge's was... That's not, that's not actually again, true. Edge. Edge well, is the savior when it comes to this kind of stuff. Unfortunately, he is not working. I thought I thought EY and ODB's wedding ended well. That was weird. That was just weird. <laughs> it, it ended well. Yeah, it ended well with Kurt Angle coming. Uh, yeah, that that was clearly made up minute by minute as they were doing it. It was like an improv comedy sketch, but like inside a prison. Like that's what it was kind of like. It, it's like somebody and and somebody comes up to Kurt Angle. Yeah, okay, go out there with a fire axe, man. Just... Go to town. Yeah, threaten them because everyone will believe he will attack a live man on on TV with a fire axe. Yeah, it just it just got weird. Anyway, 
So yeah, I guess in that, we're, we're talking about it not as if it was the worst thing ever, so maybe it, it was successful. I, I don't know. I mean, there was a fire axe. Uh, all right, so speaking of Aces and Eights, uh, we have more developments in the Aces and Eights storyline. Uh, the question is, I mean, are you seeing any kind of light at the end of the tunnel here, Rob? Because really, of all the people that we've ever had, that we've ever discussed either here on the show, on social media, you are by far the biggest critic of this goddamn storyline. So do you see anything coming down the line where you're like, you know what, this has me somewhat not wanting to slip my wrists? Until Sting came into the steel cage and took out every and, and took out the whole fucking gang with his baseball bat, I was actually excited about the storyline. Um, I, 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 I thought they were doing a really good job. You know, Sting's bat disappears, and that was another thing that had me thinking maybe Anderson was kind of on the inside helping Sting out. Um, Sting's bat drops from the ceiling and freaks aces and eights out. They were doing, they were getting back to classic Sting with the mind games, just fucking with aces and eights. Mm -hmm. You have Kurt Angle coming out saying, "You know what? I'm with Samoa Joe. We're gonna we're gonna unmask aces and eights. I'm gonna unmask somebody tonight." You have aces and eights saying, "We can't let that happen. We have to keep our masks on." You have the steel cage, which turns into which is supposed to be a strength, but it it backfires against Samoa Joe and Kurt Angle. Um, the entire goddamn gang beats down everybody. And then Sting walks in and turns into Superman with his goddamn bat. <laughs> I'm going to take out the entire gang. I mean, I, I was wait. I half expected him to pull some Lord of the Rings shit. One swing of the bat, five guys just go, go flying. flying. Yeah. <laughs> into the back of the cage. Uh, okay, our, okay. So this was the that was part of the uh, the video packages that we were seeing teasing the return of some or the return of or arrival of somebody, and it was talked about uh, last I want to say two or three weeks ago that it was Sting. Are, are you disappointed in that that these video packages pointed to the return or arrival of somebody and it was Sting? I mean, do you feel like this is kind of like going back to the well and they're kind of drying out, or or were you legitimately excited? Like you were like it was needed. I I, I my thoughts on it were it depended on how they handled it. What I wanted to see is, you know, if, if Sting comes in and maybe teams up with somebody and helps them beat uh, Aces and Eights, I, I thought that would work. What I didn't want to see was what we had seen, you know, like Hulk Hogan and Sting making it all about them. I thought the best part of the Aces and Eights storyline so far was when they were visiting Aces and Eights and the guy actually says, you know what, Hogan, and, st and and the guy actually tells Hogan and saying, you know what, it's not all about you. Mm -hmm. I thought yeah. that was the best part of the Aces and Eights storyline. Yeah. Well, Garv, what do you think? I mean, do you think it was a, what, what do you think? I'm, I'm okay with it being Sting. You know, of course, we'd like to see someone else, uh, but it's nice to have some kind of, you know, cryptic, uh, phenom style uh you know videos like that you know <laughs> phenom style. it's it's just like takers promo just call it like it is yeah yeah I, I mean it's like you have like this mythical vibe around sting like you have with the undertaker and I, I think that's a nice thing to still have in wrestling but unfortunately they use that to build him build up his return only to have him just run out like behind the camera get absolutely no reaction from the crowd and um, take everyone out. I think it was completely mishandled how they did it. You know, they could have done it a lot better. And I, you know, if they would have done it like how they've done his return, like every other time where he's coming down from the rafters or it turns pitch black and there is Sting, I think that that works for the character, and it's 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 like a nice fun thing. But this this was just this was awful. Yeah, what they did was just awful. I mean, at at least Sting still has wrestling ability and can deliver a good match when needed. And like you said, Garvin, when you do a Sting return, you have him drop from the ceiling, or you do the classic: the stadium goes pitch black, and when the lights go on, bad guy is lying on the mat, and Sting's standing over him with his baseball bat. I mean, I mean, that's how you do the Sting return. To have him yeah. just 
you know, walk out and get into the cage. And like you said, it got no reaction to the crowd. So basically, yeah, and, and, and the and the other thing that bothered me, sorry, Harrison, the the other no, thing no. that bothered me was that that they once again made aces and eights look incredibly weak uh, in the process. You know, you 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 basically have them lose despite like you know totally screwing over Kurt Angle in the beginning of that match, uh, locking him out, busting him open. Uh, they did everything to win, but they still lost cleanly, and then to have one guy take them all out you know yeah. I, I just i just think that they're 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 mishandling this group for whatever reason it shouldn't that was, be shouldn't be like this right that that was my big thing i i was fine with them losing the match cleanly i don't think that weakened them too much but when you have one man come in and take out an entire freaking biker gang you've just made them irrelevant but I will say I do like Mike Knox uh, being a part of the group, Team Beard. Yeah, that was yeah, that was gonna be my other question. And now we got the debut of Mike Knox to go along with this. Uh, so do you think he'll be a welcome addition to the storyline? Do you think he'll contribute? Uh, he should be. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how they handle it because I mean, Aces and Eights was already angry with him as they as they left the the arena with him losing his mask. So it'll be interesting to see. Um, where they progress the storyline from here. Uh, if Aces and Eights does anything to Mike Knox as punishment. Okay. All right, Garf, what do you think? I mean, aside from the team beer yeah. loyalty that you have. Well, that, I mean, and also, uh, I mean, he has done pretty well. You, you know, we have to assume that uh, the arm breaker or whatever we want to call him, I mean, he's he's been... Uh, he's been in matches previously, and I think he's done a good job uh, up to this point. So, uh, yeah, I'm 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 excited about I'm I'm excited about that, and it's you know it's another name, and uh, yeah, he's got a beard, and it's awesome. So, <laughs> all right, so we got Genesis coming up uh, Sunday. We're gonna briefly discuss it uh, because we're gonna be sitting down on Thursday at 10 p.m. right after Impact goes off the air to actually preview the pay per view. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Make sure you join us 10 p.m. Eastern this Thursday. Uh, but basically for this point, we're just going to go through the final card, and by then we should actually have whatever the final card actually is. Uh, first up, we got Chavo, Chavo and Hernandez versus Morgan and Ryan for the tag titles. Uh, we got Tara versus presumably, I'm guessing Nikki James maybe, possibly Tess Mocker, based on how the match went on Thursday, uh, for the knockouts title. Uh, we also got RVD versus either York, King, or Ion, hopefully Christian York, uh, for the X Division title, possibly dropping it. Uh, James Storm versus Christopher Daniels, Sting versus DOC, and Jeff Hardy versus Aries versus Brood for the TNA title. I mean, we're going to get more into it on Thursday, but as far as anything on here, is there anything that you're really excited to see or any surprises you think we might be in store for coming up on Sunday? Uh, Garv, what do you got? Well, uh, I just want to throw out that, um, you know, we also have Velvet Sky for oh, the right, knockouts right, right. match. So yeah. um, I did hear a rumor that she might have gotten injured. But uh, I've been really busy today, so I, w I wasn't able to verify that or not. So m maybe someone in the live chat can let us know. Okay. But uh, yeah, there's you can throw her name in that and that hat. Uh, that would make a nice match. Terror versus Velvet versus uh, Mickey James, um, I think could could be pretty good. Uh, but don't forget about Kenny King in the uh, X Division uh, tournament. I think he's he's a good name to have out there, and you know. Although I like the the vibe that we've gotten from Christian York, and I like how how good he is, the the only issue I have is, is hey, here's this guy that we just picked up off the street, and he just went through gut check and won a few weeks ago, and hey, he's your ex division champion now. I mean, that's it seems kind of rushed. Uh, I don't know. It, se yeah, it seems like like if you put him if you put him there. That's basically saying the rest of your X Division is weak. Or like drafting a 29-year-old to be the starting quarterback for an NFL team. <laughs> Sorry. All right, never mind. <laughs> I think I just pissed off Garvin. All right, Rob, what do you think? You got any surprises coming up here? Anything you're looking forward to? Uh, I kind of agree with Garvin on the Christian York thing. I'd like to see him in a title match for the X Division. Uh, but I think he needs a little bit more work. Meanwhile, TNA has been really pushing and developing Kenny King's character, really pushing him. 
and and starting to try to give him FaceTime and everything. Um, I think my only concern with Kenny King versus RVD is we've had that match like two or three times already. Um, unless they're going to yeah. make an honest to God feud out of it, which they have the potential to do, but that means mm-hmm. more RVD. Unless we're yeah. going to see an honest to God feud out of it, I don't see them giving the the match to King either. So we could see Christian York or Zima Ion against RVD. Yeah, and let's <laughs> let's not forget, you know, the idea that that we all seem to really like, and that is. Uh, Zima Ion versus Jesse Sorensen for the title, and Jesse Sorensen uh, is ready, ready to come back. Well, yeah, I, 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 think, I think he is ready to come back. Doesn't he? he he's been wrestling a few house shows, so I mean, potentially he's good. He's good to go, and he could be making an appearance at Genesis. So yeah, so I mean, so you throw that and... bit in there. Personally, what I would I do if, if I, I were booking this so. match, I would take York King Ion RVD. Throw them all in an Ultimate X match. You think RVD could keep up with them? Well, I guess he wouldn't have to, because he could just kind of cool off, cool his jet. He could get thrown ringside and then let the three of them go at it. That, that is really interesting. That 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 would be the that would be the advantage for RVD. He doesn't have the conditioning to keep up with the three of them, but you can. Uh, but the match can turn into a spot fest. You can focus on York King and Ion while RVD catches his breath out on ringside. Yeah, and then, I mean, I like the idea of that. Only The only reason I would have Zima Ion in this match is if he wins and Sorensen comes out and cleans him. It's just because to reunite that feud. And they use the names of the pay-per-views for a reason, and Genesis could be the genesis of this feud. Right. I, I think it's a little weak, considering they usually use it for the main event, but it could be, I mean, we've seen a lot more stuff with the X Division coming up, you know, well, lately, especially with the uh, the tournament. Uh, I could see going forward with the next few months, you know, especially in the beginning of 2013, that X Division starts to make Maybe not a weekly appearance, but at least once or twice a month. Yeah. Outside of the pay-per-views, I'm saying. So potentially two or three times a month. Uh, my thing, I'm surprised you guys haven't mentioned it, Morgan and Ryan versus Chavo and Hernandez for the title. I'm hoping they drop the belts to Morgan and uh, Ryan. I, 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 I like that team. I, I think they're entertaining. I, I love, <laughs> god damn, I love that Christmas commercial. <laughs> For the two next I love the, the way Morgan board. threw Ryan under the bus. <laughs> yes, that too. So he's like, you know, I'm not going to fight, but you know, you know who's ready to fight? Ryan's going to fight. So he's just like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, I, the two of them. We when they first started, we were really skeptical about it, and they're really starting to grow into something pretty awesome. And I like the idea of them giving the belts because, like we said last uh, last week, Chavo has just been nothing but a disappointment. Uh, you know, he's turning yeah, and that's the Jericho. real reason to have them drop the title. Yeah, that's yeah. the real reason to have them drop the titles. Is Chavo just can't even awful. do the cheerleader matter, role real yeah. good. I mean, yeah. he yeah. he just kind of stood there and, oh yeah, let's go, Hernandez. <laughs> it's like, really? Too sad. Let's your, go, your, Hernandez. Your, your partner, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's just you know, I mean, Chavo's turning into TNA's Jericho. So there we are with that. All we need now is Chavo to leave and do a mediocre uh, live. Uh, Reality, don't give me that face, Garvin. He totes his TNA's Jericho. Uh, all right, so no, that's he's Genesis. Not, because he's not even he's not even close to being at Jericho's. No, he's just level. a colossal disappointment, is what I'm saying. When he comes back, that's 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 the only that, that's my only data point. Yeah, Chavo well, is not nearly him has to a like, pedigree. Compare him to like the Shockmaster then, or you know. <laughs> the Shockmaster. <laughs> Oh, uh, we are. I love that we, the IWC, will never let that die. Uh, or Hogan's fist helmet. All right, so that's TNA Genesis, at least the rough outline of it. It'll be interesting to see how Sting and DOC works. Uh, also, the three way for, I mean, the TNA title. It's going to be an awesome match. I mean, you got Austin Aries and Jeff Hardy in there, and Bobby Roode, they're all going to work well together. Jeff Hardy's clearly walking away with the belt. But uh, we'll be previewing it more on Thursday at 10 p.m. Eastern. We'll have a more definitive look at the card, you know, who's Terra facing. Uh, how is the X Division title? Is it going to be a four-way like Rob suggested, which is an awesome idea, or are they doing one-on-one? By the way, tune in Thursday at 10 a.m. at 10 sorry 10 p.m. Eastern uh, at ftwlive.com. Uh, but one last thing before we jump off to WWE, we had a whole new segment sent uh, in an interview. Hulk Hogan said he was one surgery away from fixing fixing his body enough that he could see himself wrestle again. 
The 59-year-old says that the TNA World Championship is what he has his eyes on. Uh, now, before you scoff, I think this is a joke. Hogan has been on a bevy of advertisements, and he's been involved in a lot of backstage segments. But let's not race to the bottom in how bad this could be. Let's really speculate. Will they go in this direction? Hogan holding the TNA World Heavyweight Championship belt. i got to kick it to Garvin first. Do you really think they'll do this? <laughs> Uh, uh, yes, I do. Um, I think that they will do what? this because, um, you know, we, we, we don't talk a lot about ratings, and I know the live chat didn't want us to talk about ratings, but let's be honest, they really haven't improved a whole lot. Um, and Hogan basically said, uh, I don't know, was this right around Bound for Glory, how he he would do anything to help them get over the hump and it's obvious that they are kind of depending on his name value at this time you know he is in all those advertisements uh whenever they're publicizing uh he's going that they're going to be at house shows they always make sure to say Hogan will be there kind of thing so I, I don't know i i say that they will do it they shouldn't but i think that they will i think i think if you know let's say Three months down down the road, uh, if ratings don't improve, and they're still you know hovering at one, they're gonna they're gonna probably try and do anything. They have to improve. They they've been stagnant for three years as far as ratings go. So they have to do something. And you know, knowing Hogan and what what we know of Hogan, it it's gonna happen. All right. Rob, do you agree with that? Do you really think that if the ratings dip far enough, they're going to reach into the grab bag and pull Hogan out to rescue them? Well, I don't think it's a question of ratings dipping. Uh, like uh, like we've talked about, uh, and like Garvin just mentioned, the Ravens, uh, Ravens, the ratings have Ravens. hovered pretty much, <laughs> pretty much at the same level for three years, which on one hand is really good. It, it, it makes it really easy to renew your contract with a TV uh, station when you can say, we're bringing in this many people per week. You can bet on it. On the other hand, you want to see uh, – TV stations want to see growth. They want to see growth potential, which right now TNA is not showing. Mm -hmm. So outside of getting onto a bigger network, which I've been saying they need to do for a while, they they have to they have to find something and as much as I hate to say it, Hulk Hogan could be that something because the the name value, um, and they could do something like the what the WWE did with uh, Rock versus Hulk, with Rock versus Hogan at WrestleMania, take one of their big stars maybe on Austin Aries or Bobby Roode or somebody put him up against uh, Hulk Hogan after Hogan wins the title. Um, I, I, I hate the idea, but will TNA do it? Definitely. Um, they, they will march Frankenstein, a.k.a. Hulk Hogan. <laughs> I like to think of him more as a geriatric Jesus. Geriatric uh, Jesus. Okay, well, <laughs> whichever. Yeah, that's how I feel. All right, I really I don't see them do, like, yeah, the, cynic, the cynicism and the ability to say, oh, anybody's an idiot or whatever. Uh, they would say, yeah, they'll do it. They'll do anything to get it. I mean, it really, I would hope they wouldn't do it for two reasons. One is um, they have to know that he's not going to put on a very good match. Uh, it's it's, it's going to be whoever he's, rest, it, it's, you're going to have to do something to, I don't know. I don't know what you do. You make it uh, maybe a chairs match, hardcore match, something where you can have them on the ground for a long period of time, and then maybe make the maybe stretch the match out into six spots, and then hope that you know big power moves. He's not going to be able to move very well. Uh, he's supposed to come off surgery and at 59 years old and all that. I mean, this takes a toll on your body. And and, and two, WWE's going to beat him to the punch with Rock, right. and right. I. Rock is a huge name. He's arguably the biggest name to come out of the WWE, aside from maybe Hulk Hogan. Uh, they're going to give him the Battle Royal Rumble, potentially. 
And that's going to happen in a few weeks. And so if they do this, it's going to be one of those things where it's just going to be more ammo that you can throw at it and be like, well, Rock did it. Rock did it better, and he can still defend the belt. I, yeah, I don't, I, I don't uh, understand the comparison you're trying to make. Uh, Rock is not 59. Uh, he's an, he, he's a huge name. <laughs> he's a huge <laughs> that's, the, that's the thing. That's the thing, Garvin. <laughs> On the surface, he is the, he's the biggest name the WWE has right now. He never wrestles, and he's winning the belt. He's basically being gifted the belt at a time, as Lee would say, when WWE ratings are so in the toilet that Vince McMahon has a hatchet man who is literally walking around chopping off heads. Uh, <laughs> uh, but TNA the, the is taking... Real... Well, yeah, TNA is I'm taking sorry. their biggest talent that never really wrestles, and they're going to do the same thing and give them the belt to help the ratings. It's just on the surface, no. dude, at 50,000 feet, there are comparisons to be made, and for that reason, I don't think they should do it, aside from all the other well, obvious, I, but I have a better painfully one. obvious ones. I, I have a better comparison, okay? Okay. Um, and it's apples and apples here, okay? And that oh. is... Mr. Pro if, if McMahon won Okay, the title. there we go. Yeah, all right. Okay, I'll give you that because one. Because he only comes back to get ratings, you know. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, I will give you that one. Uh, the only difference is McMahon is not on every week. Like, and, the, and, and not nosing his way into every single goddamn storyline he can. Uh, uh, regardless, yeah, it, it's... Oh, God, we're racing to the bottom again. Look, I, 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 I hope they wouldn't, but I'm kind of with you guys. It, look, TNA got a, what was it, a 2.3 when Hogan and Bischoff debuted. So the ratings potential is there. I mean, they had a massive spike. It might have been a 2.3. They might have actually crested 2.0. Regardless, it was their highest rated show ever. The potential is there for those ratings. And at this point, the product's getting better, but the ratings just aren't. And so if this is what you got to do to jumpstart it, bonus. I mean, I, you know, put it on pay-per-view buy. Everybody will watch the pay-per-view. You put some really quality matches on there. Maybe people stick around. But the big problem that TNA is going to have to tackle, uh, and, and you touched on this, uh, Harrison, if you put Hogan in a match, let alone put the belt on him, you have to be very very careful with who you send up against him because at 59 after all of his surgeries with all of his uh injuries if he takes one if he takes one bump the wrong way he's back in the hospital so not zima ion yeah not, not zima ion yeah. uh no i think with hulk hogan this thing i mean him okay him getting the belt is one thing if you're doing this he's going to have to wrestle at least twice does he have two matches in him? He can say he's got one. He's going to have to defend the belt. Unless he wins it, what, just vacates it? No. He, he'll, he'll win it, and then they'll have him defend it against Stink. Icon oh, versus Icon. God. Can you imagine that? Jeez. Well, there's a difference. Yeah, Stink can still deliver it. a halfway decent match. No, I know we've seen it, but I mean... Garvin, it's an exponential drop. The further we get away, the, the more time goes on, the vastly worse this is going to be. <laughs> it's not like it's not like oh, it happened three years ago. It's not like if something we did happened three years ago. This was like if we were six and we pulled this shit. This is the tie. This is the scope of difference here. The fine motor coordination is just dropping like crazy. It, 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 yeah. Hogan, look, the guy is a legend. You, you cannot deny that. Uh, he and, and the fact that he's doing it, and I believe him when he says that he's doing it to help the product and not himself. I buy that 100%. I think he really does want TNA to do well. And for him, and yeah, I could see him doing it. He's like, you know, I'll put my body in the line to do it. But it's going to be awful. <laughs> I mean, or it's going to be the biggest surprise in the world. If he thinks he can pull it off, I really hope it's him and his experience saying, no, I really think I can put together a good match. So more power to him. Anyway, um, in other news, um, the Pope tweeted uh, that his contract was up on the first and he did not re-sign. So no news as to where he's going to go. Probably not WWE, maybe Ring of Honor, or he might go to All Japan for all we know. Uh, but, I mean, come on, Rob. He's probably not going to show up in WWE, right? No, the WWE had him and they got rid of him. <laughs> I love that. No, <laughs> that's it. All right, and... wait for me. Uh, I, I've been saying TNA needs to get rid of him for a while. I'm glad they oh, did. I like Pope. Oh. Well, I liked Pope. Lately, not so much because I 
don't remember seeing him on TV in the past few months. But anyway, uh, Garb, you got news? All right, buddy. Yeah. Uh, well, are we, we done with TNA? Win, we? Yeah, we're done with TNA. We didn't win, did we? Um, I, I, I kind of wanted to wait until we got firm confirmation. But um, uh, according to the Raw Nerve Show, who is up for Best Entertainment Podcast, uh, we we have won. We are no the best wrestling way. podcast. No way. We are the best wrestling podcast, uh, according to the Universal Takeover Network. So, uh, oh, holy coming. shit! Wow. Okay. Okay. Well, first off, I gotta say we gotta appreciate. We gotta <laughs> give it up to our fans because they were the ones who voted. Yeah. Uh, I don't know exactly what the voting was. If it was partially. You know, judged and fan voted, but fan vote did contribute. You guys stepped up, and this is as much yours as it is ours. I gotta say that right off the bat. And I cannot yeah. believe that Joe and Lee decided to be sick today. <laughs> <laughs> well, Joe's Joe's not yeah, sick. Joe's was, for yeah other reasons. But it's Lee. a scheduled vacation for Joe. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm gonna I'm still trying to confirm it, but that's what uh, that's what the Raw Nerve Show had said. So. Uh, hopefully that's the case, but yeah, as far as we know, um, it was a fan-voted uh, award. So uh, props to you guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and, uh, but yeah, we were we were up against really stiff competition, yeah. and I have no idea how uh, Wrestling Soup did not win. But um, yeah, I mean, they 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 were up for a stitcher. I mean, that's like. I mean, that, that, they that's... they went to L.A. for a stitcher. Like yeah, I, I don't yeah, know if we're supposed to. I I don't know if we're supposed to say this out loud, but like I actually listen to other wrestling podcasts, and yeah, it's like it's a big deal. They went to L.A. to uh, go to the award show because they were nominated for best uh, sports podcast, I think. Yeah, and they uh, they were up won. against like ESPN yeah, and NBC were, and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, and they were definitely so, there, and they were there against network backed shows. So I mean that that's yeah. who they were up against, and that's the only people who beat them. I mean, they, they were still, I mean, when you're talking about, like, the biggest on the block, I mean, that's huge. Well, yeah. regardless, if this happened, we don't know. We don't have, we don't have confirmation. Oh, my God, I'm totally going to resist telling my mom. Okay. Uh, yeah, now we're if, gonna try. If, if, if we got lied to, we're going to edit this part out of the podcast. <laughs> oh, <it's laughs> yes. Well, don't make it like we got lied to, because then our fans are going to attack that other show. Don't do it. If we got lied to, just take it as a harmless prank. We got lied to. <laughs> Thanks, Garvin. We don't throw, man, I bet you were just the world's best prom date. I, I, uh, I was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't cry, so. We yeah. didn't have a beard back then. Uh, I had some facial hair. <laughs> you came out of the womb with that, didn't you? All right, let's jump over to W. Let, let's jump over to WWE. Uh, before we begin, let's be honest. We really haven't watched anything from WWE since before Christmas, and neither did you. I mean, come on. They, they were, you know, they basically were going to recap the most important bits on last Raw, on last night's Raw anyways. And really, I mean, at this time of the year, it's like the Star Wars Christmas special. I mean, it's that bad as far as what they do. So uh, we're just going to move right along and just kind of go into basically, I mean, last night's Raw. I mean, we had the Return of the Rock. Um, John Cena and Dolph Ziggler did, I mean, that was, say what you want about John Cena. He got that crowd pumped. Ziggler came in and got them amped, and the two of them put on one hell of a match. That crowd was 100% behind him. And smart booking to have the crowd cool down on uh, the Divas match because you had, I can't imagine that crowd going for three hours, you know, having spent 20 minutes on what they did at the beginning of that show. They grabbed that show by the, they grabbed that crowd by the scruff of their neck, and, and that was an amazing, amazing match, hands down. Uh, so as far as everything else goes, I, I mean, Raw itself, I mean, is, again, I, I again, cannot do the three-hour Raw. I, 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 I recorded it and I watched it today just because, I mean, yeah, the BCS was on yesterday too, but at the same time, I mean, it's three hours. I just couldn't do it. I mean, Gar, what, what, do, you, what do you think? But this was the best three-hour Raw that they've put on in a while. Uh, you know. Yeah, hands down, yeah. Uh, it, it, there were some low points. Uh, I felt like the uh, Randy Orton segments were kind of crap. The 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 Orton Slater match was eh, at best. Uh, it, some of the segments felt a little too much. Like they kept going, they kept going back to uh, uh, 
kept going back to Kane and Daniel Bryan. I felt like you know they didn't have to keep going back to that throughout the entire show, and they weren't really going any for anywhere with the segment. I mean, there, there was stuff like that, you know, a lot of there was some filler there, but just not as like you're saying. It was definitely the best Raw that we've seen, a three-hour Raw that we've seen ever, probably. And yeah, there were some holes in it, but not as bad as it has been. But as far as a wrestling Raw, uh, I think this is probably one of the better wrestling Raws that we've seen, uh, you know, probably in the last two months. Um, you know, it didn't have superb matches across the board, but, uh, you know, that opening contest between Cena and Dolph uh, outside of the, the finish, uh, I thought was a great match. Uh, mm-hmm. The WWE title match, I thought was a great match up until the finish. Um so yeah, I, yeah, I, but I, I agree with you that it is difficult. But last night I was able to make it all the way through, and I rarely say that. <laughs> uh, for me, uh, Punk already won 2013. He just won the year with the "Your arms aren't long enough to box with God." Boom! That when he said that, I was like, "Oh, you are my hero." I, I that I don't know who if he came up with it, whoever came up with it brilliant, brilliant piece of writing there. It was just perfect. And good on Rock to roll with it. I don't know if that was if, if Rock's reaction was uh, scripted as well, but damn, that was awesome. And that was a, that was a solid segment. And the, the only criticism I have is somewhat related to when Punk was going up against Cena uh, for the belt, and that was that Cena, like The Rock, is a big personality. They, they go out to you. They're, they're loud. They go out to the crowd through your TV. They come to you. Whereas Punk is very insular, and he uh, pulls you in. And we didn't see that. We saw Punk trying to match The Rock in the big bombast type of thing. And I felt when he was doing that, it wasn't as strong as when he was pulling you in with, you know, trying to pull you in and... and kind of attack The Rock, you know, one-on-one, whereas The Rock is like, it's me and the crowd, and Punk is making it clear, no, 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 no. It's you and me, and that's it. Yeah, but, you know, and, and this this was also talked about, uh, dirt, you know, through the segment uh, on Twitter and on uh, the Google Plus community, uh, you know, it seemed like everyone was saying similar things, but, you know, overall, I, I don't think we can necessarily – Look at this as, uh, you know, who who had the, the better promo? Was it, you know, did did Rock win that? Did Punk win that? I don't think that matters as much as it did, uh, you know, when we were seeing Rock versus Cena. Um, I think that was um, well, we had a year of that. You know, a, a better situation for that. Yeah, and the same thing for for Punk versus Cena. I think there was a better situation to see who was going to win that. But at this point, what they need to do is sell that match, that pay-per-view match. And I think overall they did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, they totally did. I mean, you could tell the heat between them. You could, I mean, Punk did a great job of having that barely, and especially as The Rock went on. Like, in the beginning, he was kind of dismissive about it because, you know, he just did his pipe bomb and everything. And so he was kind of like, you know, too cool for school. And then as The Rock started going after him and started, going, you know, started hitting him, you can tell Punk feeding off of that. And you could see him starting to have that barely controlled rage, which you, which you saw somewhat when he went against Cena for the belt, but not to this extent. And I really appreciated that because there was almost some, like some points. And again, Punk pulling you in where you think he is, he's going to fall off the handle and he's going to say something like, you know what? Fuck you. Or he's going to do something like that where he's just going to lose his temper. And I love that Punk is able to do that. And you saw that. And, and that interplay is what made that segment work. And definitely, like you said, Garvin, for me, sold that match. I, I mean, yeah, so going on from now, it's just going to be building on that great base, that awesome foundation that they laid down. Yeah, I mean, the only negative that I can I can come away with is that, you know, we we didn't really hear anything new from The Rock. It was like, the, it was the same old stick. Uh, he's got to make his, the, the same jokes that he makes every time. Uh, this cookie puss, whatever the hell that is, uh... <laughs> You know, I I don't I don't really understand what the point of the Rock was because like it it, it seemed to to me that he really wasn't out there to sell the match just to get the, he was out there to get the crowd behind him and I think he did a good job at that but I don't know the other thing well, that that bothered me about Punk just real quick is oh, that sure, sure. I I don't I don't understand 
why he's bringing everything else into it. Like, you know, he, he did, he, he, his, his promo against Rock was great. Uh, his promo against WWE is great. You know, as far as the whole, you know, little Jimmy gets over, but Tyson Kidd doesn't. Kid doesn't. Yeah, I thought that was a good move. I don't, I don't get how that's related and what that means. Like, what, what was the point? Was it just to troll us and throw it in our face? Like, was that the direction that they're going? It was, it was kind of hard to tell. I'm, I'm just not sure. I, I was following exactly what the point of that early part of it was. Well, I, I think it comes down to something that we were talking about last week, which was uh, the fact that we had, like, and everybody talks about it, the summer of punk, when he started his rise with a pipe bomb and how much of a lightning rod he was for discussion when it came to, to us. Uh, so I think it was part of that was to reignite that, because like we said last week, he's been very stagnant for the past two to three months. You know, we haven't seen anything new from him. Uh, his stuff has been mostly... Re- at this point, run-of-the-mill heel stuff. Here, play with Heyman, who I am surprised had no presence at all in that segment between Rock and Punk. I'm sorry, bet- yeah, between Rock and Punk. Heyman's ego got usurped by the Rock's ego, which I-, I can only imagine that creative meeting when the two of them are sitting in that room and they're like, and you know, trying to tell Heyman, "You're not going to say a damn thing. We're not even going to put the camera on you." I-, I just that I cannot believe that happened, but. I, I think it was more, I think this was to basically, this promo, was, or that, po- that promo before, was to give Punk that same kind of summer of Punk heat that he had. Because let's face it, he, he, the second Punk came out with the mic, you knew he was going to interrupt by The Rock. You knew The Rock was going to get the crowd behind him. So you got to give Punk something before that. You know, give him some momentum that they can build off of. And that's really why I think he, like you said, maybe they did troll us with the Tyson Kidd thing. But it's this, yeah, I mean, what else are you going to do with it? Yeah, you give uh, and also I, I, I just want to counter uh, one, one point you were saying. You know, I think uh, one of one of the major criticisms against uh, Punk's reign as of late, and I think, and and you touched on this, was that yeah, it's getting kind of stale. Uh, same mm-hmm. thing, kind of every other week. But at the same time, I mean, looking back at the last five years, uh, this is this is kind of new territory for them. They've never had the title on someone for this long obviously but they've never had someone in that title picture other than John Cena consistently mm, yeah. uh and i think that's i think that's great so although it's not working and running on all cylinders i still think uh i still think it's good i wouldn't say it's stale i i think it's just not going in the direction that uh, we we expect because you know it's entirely different than what we normally expect Oh, right, and I don't mean to say it's stale. I just mean to say it's basically they, they pop the clutch in and put it in neutral for a few months. And you really can't, if you're going to do it, which it was very clear they were going to do a year, or at the very least they were going to beat Cena's record, you cannot have him going full throttle week in, week out, because you're just going to burn him out. It, it, we're just going to get burnt out on him, because like, at that point, yeah, at that point then we would be saying he's completely stale, it's tired, it's, you know, it, it's it's... Cena all over again because you just can't have him going full throttle every single time he's on camera because you're just going to run out of material for him to work with. So yeah, at some point you got to put you got to put cruise control on, and that's kind of what they were doing the past few months. Yeah, it, and it did help that he was injured to you know to allow for. Somebody. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to uh, kind of give him storyline reason, yeah. But I did like the jab against Hogan and the older generation. That yeah. Even though they may have held the title longer, they weren't wrestling every week. They they yeah. were wrestling once a month. So yeah, that's that was that's easy. I I, I like that attack against uh, the older generations because it it really turns down that whole uh, you know Bruno longest Martino reigning champion in modern yeah. history. Yeah, that's yeah. something that everyone has been saying you know on Twitter, or Facebook, or whatever. So I, I'm glad I'm glad I'm glad that they're pulling that they're actually. You know, this shows that they are listening to what people are saying and are going to attack it. Yeah, you know? and not even that, but just give it context because it is important to note that, yeah, it, it's it, it. Bruno San Martino did not wrestle every single week. You know, I mean, he 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 did not defend the title every month. Uh, he did not have to get on a jet or whatever they had back then, a stagecoach, and go from town to town to town. Uh, across this country and overseas to defend the goddamn belt. So, yeah, it is important to give context. And I think this is also WWE basically acknowledging that defeat, that they will never have somebody hold the belt longer than Bruno San Martino did. And you can kind of see that whenever they did those graphics releasing 
seen as Ray or Punk's Ray when he was climbing that ladder. They did not have that graphic, and then that huge spike of Bruno San Martino holding it for what, like six goddamn years. They just had it to where it was okay. He's going up against Cena. Cena's going okay. This is where he is in Cena. This is where he is in relation to Rock. You know, I mean, it was like that. So I think they're just conceding that that they're just saying we're never going to beat it. So maybe they do modern era. Maybe they do whatever they want to define it as is fine by me. But I think they're basically they just they're they're they are they're just ceding that point. They're never going to have somebody who holds the belt longer than him, and it's just not feasible. Maybe. I don't know. I mean. Yeah, yeah, this is not going to happen. It would, be just, uh, it would just get so tired. Uh, all right, the other thing I wanted to talk about is uh, Antonio Cesaro, and uh, specifically it's Cesaro and uh, potentially The Miz. Uh, Miz was ringside doing his usual stick, which was always gold. Uh, Cesaro up against Great Khali. He did go up against Great Khali. He still looked good. He looked fantastic. I mean, he still hit the neutralizer on him, and it looked great. Um, yeah, it's Great Khali, so you got to grade him on a scale. Do you think Cesaro has potential here? Because we talked about it a little bit before that, you know, he's he's 80% of the way there. He just needs that extra 20% to make him someone like Sheamus or someone like, eh, maybe not Orton, but someone like, uh, you know, like Ziggler that you can really build something on. Do you, do you think he has the potential there? Or do you, I mean, do you think Miz is maybe the key to tapping into that? Let me start it off with this, with this way, okay? Can you ever remember a good Kali match? That's what I'm saying. You got to grade it on a... No. No, no, no. Just answer the question. No, no you've never seen a good no. Kali I, match. I can't... Re- well, except when he was maybe in a tag... I remember he had a tag match where it was him and Mahal, and it was okay, but that was mostly because of Jinder Mahal. But as far as a singles match, God, no. Okay. I might have been having a stroke, but I thought that match was like the best Kali match that oh, I have yeah. ever seen. No, I don't think so, you're having a so by saying that, yes, Cesaro <laughs> has so much potential if he can if he can put Kali over like that. Yeah, and, I mean not even just like the pure the pure physical acumen of being able to hit the neutralizer on the Kali because you got to think he's deadlifting the leverage involved. Guys, it's like picking up a couch and throwing it over your shoulder from one end of it. It's like and the he's in leverage a sitting position. Yeah, in a seated position. The leverage involved. This guy's not going to be doing this move when he's 40. There's no way his back can do it. I don't care how much core strength um, you have. That's going to kill him. Yeah, I think I think it was Diva Jill uh, that said this last night. But um, what are the chances now that like the next step that they do is have Cesaro try and lift Big Show? Is that the direction that they're eventually going to have to hit? Yeah. They're gonna have to, he's going to have to have his John Cena moment where he does it. And then when he does it repeatedly six times later, every single time, oh, my God, he's got him up in the neutralizer. No, Cesaro, I mean, Cesaro, again, his ring, his, his, his ring talent cannot be denied. I mean, the guy is dynamite in the ring. It's just the mic work. So the question is, will a feud with Miz help him, or do you take the Ziggler route? Do you team him with someone who's good on the mic and have him talk for him for a while until he's comfortable, and then you switch him off and you have him go off into a singles competition, or um, go off by himself. Which route, I mean, do you see those two routes being viable? Do you have a third option? What do you think, Irv? I like the Miz idea. That's being talked about in the live chat as well. Um, yeah, I, I, like, I like the Miz route. Um, I think that that would definitely help, but then you're putting Miz into the U.S. championship title race, and that's that's kind of weird. Uh, you it know, will conflict I think... with his Miz TV segments, which is all he has going right now. What else is he going to uh, well, do? Well, I know. I, I know. It, it, it's weird because <laughs> every time we have like a world champion and we're like, you know what? They should just move him to like the IC or you know, get him out of the world title race and have him help build stars and whatnot, and, you know, we so we suggest, you know, the the IC. Like, I think we were talking about this with Jericho. You, you, you put him yeah. in the IC title race, or you put yeah. him in the U.S. title race. Like, um, I can't remember who we were suggesting uh, for the U.S. title race, but, but still. Uh, it, but for some reason, I have a hard time saying that about Miz. Like, I almost want Miz to, to go for the top title. Like, that's where he should be. Do you, do you think that's down to the fact that Miz really doesn't have the pedigree of multiple 
you know, main event championship wins. I mean, he's got the one run with the WWE title, which was pretty good. Uh, do you think that's what it is? Do you think it's the experience factor, maybe? Like, he just hasn't been around long enough? I don't know. Uh, you know, I think... Or, are, okay, okay, are you worried that if they take him out of the main event and they put him in the mid card, it's going to be a long time before we see him in the main event again? Because the one advantage of saying guys like taking, like when we say take uh, Sheamus or Orton or somebody and say, well, if you kick him to the IC, they can really build up people. Or if you kick him to the U.S. title, they can help build up people. You can say that with that safety net of knowing, well, they can always just pull him back to the main event whenever they want. Can you really say that about the Miz, though? Um, not face Miz. Heel Miz? I, uh, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Like, I think, I think heel Miz works better going for a top title. Um, I I don't I, I don't know. Uh, it, it just it just feels weird. I I think you know he's young enough and he has enough potential that he should be going for uh, a top title. He was there. I mean, he was two, was two years ago at WrestleMania, like yeah, two years no, ago. I, I don't know. It, I don't know. It just feels weird. But I I guess in the grand scheme of things, if they have to do something with Miz. Um, and they're still trying to push Cesaro as you know a heel. He hasn't really had uh, a great face to to bounce off of. So yeah, if you might as well, I, you can, I, I, like it won't fail. But I just think it's an it's an odd pairing that I'd rather see Miz do something else. Okay, Rob, what do you think? Uh, yeah, um, I think if you pull Miz to the mid card, it's going to be a lot harder to pull him back to the main event. Uh, problem is, you know, we talked about this earlier too, where apparently Miz had done something to piss off WWE, and that's why it was yanked from uh, the main event in the first place. I don't know about that, but maybe. <laughs> yeah. no, no, no. Well, with the WWE, one never knows for sure. I mean, yeah, we're, yeah, the, the, we're... the politics backstage, or I mean, you know, it's almost as bad as what's on stage. Yeah. Right. Um. But whether the, whether that's true or not, the point is he was taken from the main event and we didn't even see him on TV for months. And now you see him back in trying to work his way back up the ladder and you see how long that's taking. I think if you pull him out of the main event and throw him into another division, it could easily be a year before he's back in the main event picture. Yeah, that's the worry that you have with uh, someone like him, only because he doesn't have that kind of main event pedigree. So it's like, you know, do you want to snip that in the bud now to help out Cesaro? And, you know, this year, if you were only looking at this year, I would agree with you. But, I mean, if you want to think two, three, five years down the road when guys like John Cena are going to be getting old and you can't rely on Big Show and Orton and, you know, these huge names that you normally can to really carry a main event you really got to get some talent in there, and I think it's a smart move. As awful as it would be for Miz short-term, long-term, it would help him. Uh, it would establish him better as a singles wrestler. You can then build, it, build him back up in the main event, and it could potentially get over Cesaro. And when you look at a ring talent like Cesaro, you got to roll the dice with him. And, yeah, he's not that great on the mic, but I can't, I can't think of a foreign wrestler that wasn't English who is. Who, who, who you look at and say... That guy is amazing on the mic. Even Rey Mysterio, who's like the biggest face of all faces, isn't that great when it comes to a segment. No. I mean, Alberto Del Rio is better, and look where he are, look where he is. So there is that handicap, but I really think with Cesaro, he's that good that you've got to do it. You've got to roll the dice on him. And if Miz takes the hit, Miz takes the hit. All right. Well, anyway, enough about Miz. Uh, Royal Rumble. I don't know. Oh, the Iron Sheik was entertaining on the mic. Bret Hart, who is a foreign wrestler, was great on the mic. Oh, come foreign, my Canadian. Hey, Canadian is not foreign. He's not American. Oh my, ah, oh, Rob. Oh, that he's barely not American. And how is it barely not American? This is Tell a Canadian not, that they're barely not American, a, and they okay, will punch okay. you in the face. <laughs> you don't. Up until a few years ago, you didn't need a passport to go there. How is that not American? <laughs> when Bret Hart was a face run, you needed an ID to get into his country. It was harder to get into a bar than it was Canada. And you're telling me 
He's foreign. Oh, Rob, I'm sorry. God, that's like, saying a la- that's like saying someone... No, I would say someone from Alaska is less American than someone from Canada. Anyway. Um, I'm so glad we're going to have that recorded because we've just lost our fan base in Alaska. Yeah, all six people. All six of them. <laughs> uh, can't read that, Garb. All right, so we're going to talk about Royal Rumble. Uh, here we are. It's market calendars. Uh, we're going to be sitting down uh, on the, at 2 p.m. on Saturday, January 26th, which is the day before the Royal Rumble, to talk about the card and give our predictions of what we hope will take place. Uh, as we know it, here's where it is. It's Kane and Bryan versus somebody, presumably Rhodes Scholars, uh, for the tag titles. Cesaro versus possibly Miz, once again, speculation, but we don't know, for the U.S. title. Wade Barrett versus, versus somebody for the IC title. I don't have a guess for that one. Uh, Big Show versus ADR for the world title. CM Punk versus The Rock for the WWE title. And then we have the Royal Rumble itself. The names that we know are going to be in it are Cena, Orton, Sheamus, Dolph, a bunch of mid carters, I think three men band are going to be in it. Uh, yeah, and but the, here's the big one: Dolph Ziggler is actually going to be in it. And Diva Jill wrote in and said something pretty interesting. She said, "What if Dolph won the Royal Rumble, then won the WWE title at WrestleMania 29, as well as cashed in the Money in the Bank the same night to then unify the titles?" Diva Jill, what I want you to do is whatever you were on when you thought of this, package it up and send it to me so I can sell it and buy myself a car. <laughs> well, to answer Diva Jill's question, um, whoever's team Doff is on, if that happens, wins the draft. Right. <laughs> yes, yes. Whoever picks, whoever picks Dolph for the draft would win that season because, oh, damn, gosh. how many points in a night? Would no. that be? Yeah, how are we going to do the Rumble? Wait, we're not doing the Rumble for the draft, are we? We are. Uh... Real quick, the Rumble is the winner gets five points. Okay, so that's how we're doing it. We're not tabulating over defeats and everything. It's just winner take all five points. All right, I like that. Okay, anyway, Garv, what do you think about the idea? Because we keep to every time we get a chance, we talk about Dolph cashing in, and then now we're adding Dolph cashing in and unifying the titles. <laughs> epic. That is epic, man. I was, I'm in love with that idea. That is something that we have... We have we have talked about and toyed with you know what if they unify the titles here here's a cool opportunity and they have everything in place to do it it won't happen no, no but I'd love it <laughs> <laughs> let's take Dolph Ziggler who is just now going to break in the main event what do we do we give him the same honor that we gave Chris Jericho after he was a consistent main event talent for years. To unify well, the title. let's be fair. I mean, that's something I don't they know didn't if let you've Cena watch the. Yeah, but I don't know if you've watched the Jericho DVD, but you know, I think it was pretty obvious that they really weren't giving him a lot of consistent great opportunities. Yeah, he put on great matches, but Dolph is also putting on great matches. So you know, there 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 is an opportunity there to Jericho. do something awesome. Go ahead, Rob. No, go ahead. Sorry, I was waiting for Garvin to finish. I'm guessing he's finished. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, I'm done. Uh, uh, yeah, Jericho really didn't break through and become like a household name until he beat Stone Cold Steve Austin and The Rock in the same night and unified the belts. That's that's what oh. the WWE literally had to go that far to make Jericho a household name. Oh, I disagree with that, man, because, when, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's, first off, Jericho is his own worst enemy. I mean, hands down, backstage, that, that's, that's, that's the case. Yes. Uh, if, if, I don't know if that's the same case with Dolph, because we really haven't seen him break through. So if he is the same thing backstage, maybe they're thinking, hey, here's another guy who's phenomenal in the ring, is pretty good on the mic, and is also a complete asshole. If we give him both belts, <laughs> it'll be awesome. <laughs> It, it, it could be. I mean, uh, let's take that Venn diagram. Those are the only three things we need. <laughs> All we need to do is have seen a drunk, and we get the same thing. Uh, <laughs> I, oh. The thing about Jericho unifying the belts for me was he kind of was a household name. I mean, he he was. I mean, he wasn't. It, look, he wasn't The Rock. He wasn't Stone Cold. I mean, it, it's very clear he was not that. But as far as a wrestling fan goes. He was just as big of a name. I mean, he made a name for himself in both WCW and WWE. So you can't really say. Uh, my point is, when Zig, when, when they unified the title with Jericho, he was leaps and bounds ahead of where Ziggler would be. 
if everybody in WWE smoked peyote and decided to do this asinine idea. Anyway, Carf, go on. Well, I, I just want to throw in uh, that, you know, not all the fans were behind Jericho. You know, well, definitely it, it not was... this last run. <laughs> no, no, but at, at yeah. that time, I mean, he he only attracted certain members of of the the you know the wrestling fan community, and and Dolph is the same way. He's putting on great matches. I I, I wouldn't shortcut him so much. No, did he have the experience that Jericho had uh, in WCW? No, no, of course not. But you know, uh, I think. Uh, he's a guy that a, a good portion of us has been pushing them to do something uh, good with, and and we all think that if they do it, something great can happen, you know. Uh, but no, I, you know, realistically, they're not going to unify the titles. But I wouldn't totally undercut it. I wouldn't say he's not <laughs> as good as Jericho, you know, when Jericho oh. unified the titles. I think I think oh, that's a, that's a rough comparison. It's it's a rough comparison to say they are the same. Jericho had years in WCW to build up yeah. his name, and when he came over to WWE, and when he came over to WWE and interrupted The Rock, that was a huge segment. I mean, they they pumped that Y two J thing, huge pop but, from the crowd. He had that momentum. Okay. But this conversation isn't. Hey, is Dolph uh, is is Dolph Ziggler Jericho two point oh? No, this is <laughs> hey, could Dolph actually handle oh you find the titles? And I think you could, and I think he could. I'm trying to figure out what we're going to get more hate mail for, either saying that we want to see this happen or that you just said that Dolph Ziggler was Jericho 2.0. No. All of it, man. That is all you. I did not say that. <laughs> <laughs> I bet the chat room is just eviscerating you right now. Uh-huh. All right, so <laughs> or certain elements in the chat room are eviscerating you. Diva Jill, I, 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 I don't know. <laughs> oh, my God. It, it look. This does not pass the smell test. If if it was a Wrestle Zone exclusive that they were going to do this, no one would buy it. Uh, a few things from from the live chat, real quick. Um, one is uh, Diva Jill's backing me up, saying that you know, of course, Jericho was big with the WCW fans. She's defending, but her not with WWE people. You know, not exclusive WWE fans until he, they unified the title. That oh, that uh, that was when he sorry. really made it big. Uh no. That was it, when he really made it big. Okay, it's but, when he... Oh, okay, go on. Then the other thing is, um, who who was Jericho's last feud with? Oh, god damn it. Don't, don't pull this lost pseudo and the circle is complete kind of bullshit by saying that because I'm, Ziggler was the last feud. I'm not saying this specifically, but uh, Nick in the live chat is pointing out that, you know, how, how great would that story be to have Jericho come back? Because it's mo- more than likely a Jericho will return. He gets back into a feud with Ziggler, and Ziggler's got the, unif- uh, the unified titles. How, how epic would that be? Unified champion versus unified champion. Uh, that, that's, that's pretty sweet, right? <laughs> For Okay, okay. To put this too bad... <laughs> You can't, I don't give a shit how huge Jericho became when he unified the belt. Before that ref's hand hit the fo- hit the mat for the third time, he was a much bigger star than Ziggler would be at WrestleMania. Because at that point, Ziggler would not have done anything other than hold a briefcase for almost an entire year. I mean, he only got rid of Vicky three, four weeks ago, and now he's got AJ. I mean, WWE, it, they're, they're not going to do this. They're not going to do this. And you just removed the main event belt from, from both shows. And it's not going to happen. It's, it's just not going to happen. No one watches SmackDown anyways. Come on. Yeah, as a ratings or indication, nobody does watch SmackDown except for and, Mike and, 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 and Joe. And, and what's the uh, and what's wrong with removing the the belt from both shows? Considering oh my god, we gotta they, this they've pretty show. much gotten rid of the brand separation, anyways. How many yeah. times do wrestlers from one show or the other make appearances? How much more self righteous can we get discussing this goddamn? This is never going to happen. 
Stop bringing up scenarios where this could be a possibility. I don't care how pure and amazing it would be for them to unify the belts and throw away the idea of the brand separation when they don't really give a shit anyway. How awesome it would be for Jericho to come back and do this. And for the WWE to send us all nice little warm cookies to let us know they appreciate us as fans. It's not happening. I want to move on. Can we move on? You, sure. well, let's 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 agree to disagree. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Potentially the best wrestling podcast, <laughs> according to Universal Takeover Network, oh. and we can't. Yeah, I hate you so much right now. <laughs> um, let me let me make that official. Um, the Universal Takeover Network. Their official uh, Twitter account uh, did did verify that uh, we we did win. So I will not be removing that early congratulatory uh, speech. You, well, you want to edit that? Okay, okay, okay. We'll take our victory lap at the end of the show. Regardless, the point is, this is I can't imagine a more beautiful moment for our show than we win an award later that show. We honestly entertain the idea of what Diva Jill just gave us. And not even entertain, I'm the voice of, one, I'm the voice of reason. Two, I have to defend the voice of reason, where apparently I'm in the minority on this show and the chat room. I cannot believe I'm going to say this, I miss Lee. <laughs> wow. Uh, There's a pipe okay. bomb. All right, let's move on. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, we're going to jump down to Ask FTW. <clears throat> Sorry, I couldn't even mute. Uh, where you ask and we answer, you can send us topics via email to questions at fdwpodcast.com. You can send them on Twitter by DMing us at fdwpodcast or by using the hashtag AskFTW. You can post on our Facebook wall or even hit up our Google Plus community. Uh, make sure you hit our website, fdwpodcast.com, and search around the footer so you don't have to search around for it. Uh, and you can even leave a comment on the site. Uh, you, you literally have no excuse now uh, to send in your ideas and your uh your opinions, and we'll bring it into the discussion. Uh, so on New Year's, Zack Ryder went on Twitter and said, uh, quote, no reason for me to watch the ball drop tonight. I've lived through the ball being dropped with me all year. Uh, we shared a screenshot of that in our Instagram account for Proof Seas, and our own Garvin, you buddy, replied with, quote, too bad he didn't capitalize on the opportunity he was given. We all had high hopes for Ryder. Apparently this warranted busting out the beaten sticks and going to town on a resident bearded one because you guys... <laughs> Took him to task. Eric on Facebook said, capitalize on what exactly? A joke of a title reign that ended with him being buried by Cain and Eve? Nicholas, also on Facebook, said, Zach's push was sacrificed to give the most over guy in the company some more exposure. Michael L. emailed us about Zack Ryder and his recent frustration. Uh, do you... <laughs> you know what? Here it is. Rob, do you think Garvin's wrong for thinking that Zack Ryder was awful when they finally put him on TV? No, uh, he was awful. You can look at him. Eric and Nicholas go in the webcam. Look at him go! Yay! Eric, sorry, Eric and Nicholas can make those points, but at the same point in time, there was a reason that he was buried, and the reason was when they put him on TV, when they gave him the ball, he couldn't run with it. Okay, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah, this is Ask FDW. Garvin, what do you got? Well, wait, I want to hear if you agree with me. With... How about we agree to disagree? <laughs> uh, no, no, no. I, I think Zack Ryder, he's, he's got magnetism, he's got charisma, he's just not main event. I'm sorry. He, you know, we can like him as much as we want as a person, but, I mean, Garvin maybe hit him a little harsh with that, uh, I didn't really have high hopes for him. Uh, I always went to Joe and I constantly butt heads about that because Joe, you know, loves Zack Ryder, and I just thought, you know, I just don't see it in, in this guy. And you know, WWE agreed, and they—you can argue that maybe they didn't really try with him. Maybe they gave him like a, a half shot and not a full shot. But you know, this, the fact remains that it, it, it takes two to tango, and I really think that maybe he didn't drop the ball, but he didn't. He definitely did not make the most of what the opportunity that he had. Uh, so there you go. Garv, what do you got? Yeah, and 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 let's be fair. I mean, uh, I'm not I'm not disagreeing with the circumstances that everyone was pointing out, um, and I'm not disagreeing with 
uh, what the live chat is saying now, like, you know, that he he had the crowd behind him and, you know, uh, the WWE just ignores him and the fans and what they want. Uh, I get that. I, I'm, I'm, I'm totally cool with it. And, yeah, maybe maybe they did rush rush it. Maybe they did. But he looked awful. I mean, let's... Can we let, let's let's be let's be completely honest here? He looked awful in the ring. Um, it was all hype, and he didn't fulfill. I, I'm sorry, he didn't. That's why he's <laughs> off TV. All right, I can't really disagree with you on that one. Yeah, he, he was terrible, right? Uh, all right, Eric B on Facebook wrote and said, "I was wondering uh, what feud would you like to see in 2013 for him? He's been wanting to see Punk and Ambrose go at it uh, on the mic since he found out about Ambrose a little over a year ago. Ooh, wrestling hipster found out about Ambrose a year ago. Uh, what are your what are our thoughts? He wants to know what our thoughts are on this. Uh, Rob, what do you think? You like the idea of seeing Punk and Ambrose in 2013? Uh, Punk and Ambrose could be uh, a good feud uh, as far as the WWE goes. Um, TNA wise." I want to see, you know what, I want to see Bully Ray and Austin Aries continue their feud. I think their first feud was cut off um, a little short. I want to see them get a full program. Without the Hogans? Yes, without the Hogans. I just wanted to be sure that they would get a full program different yes. from what they had. Okay. Yes, uh, Aries, and, Aries and Bully Ray sans Hogans. There we go. Okay, so there, there's, your, there's your equation for excellence. All right, Garvin, what do you got? Uh, yeah, I agree with Rob. I liked uh, Aries and uh, Bully. Uh, maybe even throw AJ in that. Uh, I, I think I think would be a, a good mix. Um, I liked their matches. Um, and throw the world title into that as well. That'd be epic. Um, as far as the feud for WWE, I want to see Daniel Bryan fight for the WWE Championship. So whether that's against Punk, great. Uh, they put on stellar matches. It doesn't really matter who it's against because he's he's great. Dolph, maybe Dolph versus Daniel Bryan. That would be pretty sweet. Uh, yeah, so that's me. Uh, I mean, I know it's going to be hard to uh, see how this works considering they're both heels right now, but, you know, just because I want to see what would happen is uh, Ziggler versus Sandow. Uh, I, I really like Sandow. I, I really think he's got a great character that has not evolved yet. And I love Sandow because he's that classic, um, swarmy, foreign, I'm smarter than you character that we've seen a lot, like in the 80s and 90s, or in the early 90s, you know, right around there, when the Attitude Era was coming up. Uh, he's kind of like that classic character. And then you can look at Ziggler and say he's that classic character cut from the same cloth as, like, you know, Mr. Perfect, a million dollar man, and that type of thing. So the idea of having these two sort of remixes of things that we 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 very familiar with, I would just like to see him in a program. I don't know, maybe it takes off maybe it takes off face because you can't really take you can't take Sandow's character face, but I would just like to see how that interplays because we never really got to see it in the past. So maybe we can see it now, and I, I think these two guys would make a pretty decent program. I mean, I wouldn't go for it for you know this isn't a WrestleMania main event or anything, but just for me, just to see what these two guys can do with something like that. Oh, Garf, you got something? Yeah, uh, from the live chat, um, they're suggesting Sandow versus Sheamus. Um, oh. As a possibility. No, um, Sheamus is that great the... on the mic. No, I don't, I don't necessarily understand that one either, but, um, you know, I'm just, I'm ring, just reading. Maybe? Don't kill the messenger. Well, no, I mean, in the, you know, like, no, in ring it would be pretty interesting because uh, I can see them working because yeah. Sheamus is clear he can work with anybody. Uh, but, I mean, in the yeah, on the mic, that's the thing. You, I mean, it's mostly segment for me. It, it's the storytelling and the mic work. And Sheamus just isn't up to par. I, I just can't see him working. A, Sheamus needs, like, a caricature to go up against, like Alberto Del Rio or something. And he does because he's almost a caricature of himself. Although, for some reason, he I mean, this is something I have. Irish people always sound tired to me. They always sound like they just got done with a run because they just, oh, oh Sheamus, honey, what I got to do? Just give me a minute. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yo, oh, just low him hang on, because they just sound like they're out of breath to me. So I, I just that's why he needs to go up against Alberto Del Rio. Uh, don't forget the fella. Yeah, yeah. Throw oh, fella. fella. It's just with a thing. <laughs> and a, just let me sit down for a minute. Hang on. <laughs> just oh, uh, get, get a glass of water for me. Uh, also, AJ Styles versus Aries was thrown out a couple times. So yeah, I, I agree with that one totally. Yeah, that'd be pretty good. Yeah. 
I, I still like Rob's better. AJ versus Bullock. All right, uh, Steve G on Facebook said, if you could choose who could be the TNA World Heavyweight Champion, who would you pick? Uh, I guess don't worry about dropping the title or who would have it before him. Just right now, give the belt to who you ever think is most deserving. Build the program later. Garv. Bully Ray. You want to get quick justification of that, or other than the he obvious? He is phenomenal. He is a fantastic. Why not? Why not? Go Do it. Uh, Rob. Uh, I would probably give it to Austin Aries. Justification? You guys got thirty seconds. Why are you all of a getting truncated now? Just <laughs> the justification for it would be, you know, Austin Aries is done a lot for TNA. He's really pushed the company forward and he's one of those rare talents who can tell a story in the ring with his moveset and is just awesome on the mic. Can deliver a great promo when needed. Okay. For me, Joey Ryan. You would say Joey Ryan. Right? Because it would be awesome. <laughs> That would just be pure candy. Is how it would be. Just to have Joey Ryan, the segments, the commercials they could do with that character. Uh, legitimately, James Storm. Uh, I, I think James Storm would be a great pick uh, to uh, to have the belt right now, especially you know with the whole thing of uh, Bobby Roode, and I, I think they could build a piece of program with that. But I, I think James Storm, he's done phenomenal work, and he, like Austin Aries, I'm not going to say what you guys have picked are bad, because Bully Ray and Austin Aries, hands down, yeah. And I would just lump James Storm somewhat into that. You know, just be like, you know, a different voice. And like those two, he's done phenomenal work, and I think he deserves it. All right. Uh, oh, I'm he sorry. does have the best catchphrase in wrestling. Yeah. <laughs> sorry about your damn luck. I love that so much. All right. Uh, Simeon B, which uh, Simeon's, that's the fake money in Sim City, right? Or is it whatever? Anyway, uh, on G+, uh, he linked to a blog post that he wrote, uh, basically saying how wrestling today is boring and no longer interesting or cool. Uh, he posted some videos from YWC, I'm not calling it that, member Parkin, who's a member of the British Fist. I'm not saying YWC. We're not taking the IWC and further segmenting it segmenting it like it's some kind of marketing catchphrase thing. I don't care if it's, it's YouTube. I, I don't give a shit. Yeah. I don't, it's the internet wrestling community. How you express yourself on the internet, I don't care. Because I'm not saying this is a PWC show. Podcast wrestling community. See what I did? Oh, God. See, this is why I hate it. Anyway, uh, where was I? Um... Basically, uh, Parkin, who's a member of the British Fist, who is a, a YouTube channel, it's pretty good. Uh, anyway, he said um, uh, that it was, he, they were basically saying the same thing. So the question is, is it? Is wrestling as awful uh, as the loudest in the IWC uh, keep espousing? Uh, Rob, what do you say? I say it depends on what company you watch. Uh, even though I criticize them when they screw up, uh, I think TNA is fairly interesting. Not more often than not, I'm left wanting to tune in next week. WWE, I have to fight to watch. Surprise, surprise, surprise. Yeah, 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 Mr. <laughs> TNA. I know. <laughs> Mr. TNA implies you're like some kind of like Adonis or something. I'm Mr. TNA. <laughs> Gar, what do you got? No, uh, wrestling is not awful. Um, if you don't like what you're seeing all the time consistently, then just turn it off. The negative IWC and the negative YWC makes no sense to me. Like, here you sit, and and this is no attack against anyone specifically, but just in general, like, if if you hate something so much, why spend so much time writing about it or talking about it? Just move on. Or watching other it. Yeah, wrestling to me... Personally, I'm still entertained. Sure, there's things I would have done differently. There's things I don't necessarily understand completely. But it is what it is. Wrestling is always going to be wrestling. It's always going to be segmented. There's going to be things that you like and things that you don't like. If you don't like everything, then move on. Exactly. Uh, yeah, it, on that note, uh, yeah, uh, it, it's, it, it, you know, speak with your feet. That's the thing. I mean, it, you, you can go on and on about when you guys in the arenas scream, Cena sucks, let's go Cena, Cena sucks, to the WWE, that's the sound of a cash register. Right. If you want to hurt these guys, if you want to show that this is boring and it's no longer interesting, you stop paying attention, and then they'll notice quick. 
And as you can see, because of all the, I mean, th that's how you get their attention. That's how the free market works. Yeah. Regardless, the, 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 I, I don't like these kinds of articles. And I, I'm like, Garvin and I were talking about this. And it's like, do we attack it directly? Do we respond to it directly? And we decided to do it as Ask FEW. Because for me, this is kind of like playing whack-a-mole. Uh, the, 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 this is on the surface. There are a thousand of these popping up every day. I mean, especially on like Bleacher Report and uh, what's the other one? SB something, SB Nation or something. Uh, one of these, you know, crowdsourced news aggregate opinion articles. Anyway, everybody's always constantly going on about things were better in the 90s, they were better in the Attitude Era, etc., etc., etc. The problem when it comes to this is uh, it's a combination of rose-colored glasses and a false comparison. Uh, it's a different product now because the WWE is going after a different audience. Uh, now it's kids. Parents buy shit for kids. Uh, if you were to spend money, if, 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 it, if it came out that TNA's store was sold out more often than WWE's, then we'd have a different thing to talk about. But we're not. I mean, we're dealing with a, a, an organization that's going after a completely different audience. And wrestling, as far as wrestling being cool, I mean, that's rose-colored glasses. It, it was never cool. It, it never will be cool. It's a combination of how it operates. It, it, it's, it's, an, it's basically an entertainment medium that seeks to lie to its audience. And for that reason, outsiders will view the audience as being idiots or weird for willing to accept this. It, it, it's this. It's no different than... Actually, it's different than everything because there's nothing out there like this. So, damn it. See, it's the root cause of this. I hate getting into it because I get drawn into it. Regardless, no, it was never cool. Uh, it's always going to get better because you're going to have guys like Daniel Bryan, Dolph Ziggler, Austin Aries, Bully Ray, who are going to come up and they're just going to be better and better. And you're going to watch the wrestling... Or wrestling industry and wrestling as itself as an art form evolve and change. And for that, hands down, that is the most exciting thing about this. Anybody else, or can we move on? No, I, I think you hit the nail right on the head. If well, you're trying to get the attention of whether it's WWE, TNA, or another wrestling company, the, the quickest and easiest way to get their attention, quit buying tickets to their events. Mm -hmm. they are pay yep. attention real quick. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That will get their attention. All right, James L. wrote in and said, uh, and because Lee is not on, I am comfortable saying this. Guys love the show, but thank God for Lee. I would not normally have read that if Lee was on. Uh, this podcast tends to be extremely TNA-centric. I'm sorry, I don't think the case. Uh, he said uh, with Lee having to defend WW, uh, WrestleMania uh, and Rock versus Cena, he felt it was a little off. He wanted to point out that he's been to everything from high school gyms to WrestleMania, which I highly doubt. And he's been to every possible venue that you could possibly go to between that scale, but regardless. Uh, and he says that the size of the crowd totally heightens the, heightens the experience. However, he also says, I've been to TNA house shows, both indoor and out, like uh, we were talking about in the pre-show, Base Brawl, and they do some other outdoor stuff. Uh, and the crowds are awful, and it takes away from the shows. I don't remember where everybody stood on this. I think Garvin and I were the ones, because I know Joe kicked me off the show at one point, and I'm still upset about that. But I forget where everybody landed on this. Uh, I agreed with him. Last week I was agreeing with this viewpoint, saying that it is the crowd that helps. Uh, so I'm just going to say I agree with him on saying this. And that TNA, as we've said a lot of times, if the crowd's dead, the show kind of hurts for it. Uh, Rob, do you, have a, do, you have, do you agree with him, or, did you disagree, or do you disagree with this idea? Uh, if the crowd is dead or not involved into it, it, it will hurt, yes. But you know what? I've been to high school gyms and small venues too, and when the crowd's pumped in to it and is excited about what's going on, it's it doesn't really matter. I've been to I've been to raw tapings, uh, I've been to TNA events. The size of the crowd is irrelevant. It's whether or not the crowd is into the match and excited mm -hmm. about what's going. That's what helps. That's what helps kill or make a show. If everybody's running to the toilet and buying concessions or booing, yeah. It, it, a divas match. Right. Just say it. Or worse, just not saying anything at all. Yeah, yeah. that can drag a show down no matter what okay. size you're in. Right. If the crowd's excited and going for it, whether there's 50 people or 50,000, it's still energy. Okay, I have a question to follow up on that, but I want to hear from Garvin first. What do you think? Uh, I didn't. I didn't talk about this. Uh, last oh, that's week. right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sorry. But what what I will say is, I think that there's some confusion uh, about what is actually being argued. 
yeah, large crowds who are into a match is better than small crowds that are into a match. You know, that's that's all atmosphere. If there's a, a, sh a shit ton of people around you that is that that are enthused about what's going on, that's going to that's going to make it easier for you to get into it. So, of course, of course a larger crowd is a better better atmosphere, but it doesn't mean it's a better match. You can still have great matches and great shows with smaller crowds. Okay, Except now now my now my follow-up question to this, and, and I, I know we're running long, and I just want to ask this: Could the intimacy involved with a smaller crowd kind of offset the size? The only experience I have with this is when it comes to actual theater and doing plays for small crowds, like during a dress rehearsal, when we would let people in for discounted ticket prices. Uh, you, by the way, that's a great idea for a date night if you ever want to take your girlfriend or boyfriend to a play, but you didn't want to pay full ticket price. A lot of um, uh, theater troops will let you in, and you can watch a dress rehearsal, which is actually pretty cool. But anyway, uh, you're talking like we're doing the the full play for maybe 10, 15 people. Then we're doing it, you know, opening night, the matinee, and everything, and it's a full crowd. You know, it, that said, I do know that doing the lines, doing the play, getting into character, then looking down and seeing three people, and those three people, how they react, there is a way to feed off of that. Whereas with a larger crowd that applauds after every act, that's there too. I don't know. My question is, do you think there's an offset there, or do you think it's basically we're talking about two different things? Real quick, we got to keep this quick, though, okay? Uh, Rob, what do you got? Um, I don't know. I, I mean, ha like you, when I was in... Uh, um, for when I was in high school, I was in acting and I was in athletics. Well, I, I got just as much energy from small crowds as I did. Um, I'm trying to relate. I'm, I'm trying to give this some context. I don't understand I got, why Carmen's laughing at you. <laughs> I, I, I got a. I, I, I found there was just as much energy, like you said. You know, you look out. You could you could see five people in the crowd. You know, but they're excited about what's going on. That gets you excited. Um, and it's like Garvin said too, you know. Yes, fifty thousand people is a better atmosphere. That, mm -hmm. you, you know, but that's not the same as energy, and it doesn't necessarily make the match better. Okay, Garv, what do you think? I mean, do you think that it, it's kind of the same thing when you offset the intimacy versus the size of the crowd, or kind of like what Rob's saying? We're, I mean, where do you land on this? Yeah, I'm 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 kind of agreeing with Rob. I mean, you know, just going from an indie show with an indie show that only has like 30 to 50 people in the crowd or even 150 people in the crowd. I mean, it's it's a different feel because you can have a one-on-one -on -one relatable experience with the people in the ring. They are making eye contact. They 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 will they will come out and and actually work with the people uh who are in the crowd, but you know, in a larger venue, you, you you don't have that intimacy. You don't have that opportunity to make eye contact, uh, you know, with with the wrestler. So it 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 just feels like you you are watching it. So for for you to be excited, if you're the only one excited about the match, uh, that you know, there's there's a huge conflict there. You know, uh, as far as what what makes a good match. With a large crowd, it requires more people to get involved. But with a smaller crowd, you know, you it's it's easier to get into the matches because then you can you can you can work with a smaller crowd. I guess is what I'm saying. So yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, it's 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 two separate things. It's difficult to compare, but I don't think that only good matches can happen in front of good you know large crowds. I think that's a, a misnomer. Okay, yeah, Garv, I'll, I'll agree with what you guys have said there, because the only experience I have is like, you know, I mean, just looking down at a kid and seeing them, you know, totally absorbed in what you're doing is kind of awesome. And know that you hooked that one person, and you can look down and see it, see what you did, and then you know, at the close of a show, when you get the, you know, when you get the ovation and everything, that's entirely different. But all right, all right. Well, anyway, um, Juliet at eighty <laughs> wrote this to us on Twitter. Okay, if this show hadn't gone off the rails enough for you. A rumor surfaced saying Flair could be making an appearance in the Rumble, like how fan favorite Big Daddy Cool Diesel and some other guy named Booker or something or other uh, did before. Apparently, he's booked in a tag match for All Japan uh, Pro Wrestling the day before the Rumble. So, according to the rumor mill, 
there's a possibility a 63-year-old man may take a red-eye flight halfway around the world to be tumbled over a set of ropes eight feet off the ground. Do you really think this is a possibility, Rob? It's Ric Flair. Rule nothing out. <laughs> if a paycheck is involved, can't deny it. If, can, can, if he'll get that. paid, he will be there. <laughs> Remember, we're talking about the man who offered to escort women to prom or out on a date for money. <laughs> God, that's right, he did. <laughs> and he still had his financial advisory uh, company. Garvin, uh, what do you think? Do you think that Flair making an appearance at the Rumble is likely? Very. Yeah. Very? He's wrestling yeah. the night before. You talk, it, 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 he's wrestling. This is Ric the night Flair before. we're talking about. <laughs> Ric Flair is a wrestling god. God! <laughs> he, he can do anything. And now I miss Joe. These are two things I never thought I'd ever say on the show. I miss Joe and I miss Lee. There's my fail for a win fail if I've ever heard one. Uh, I, 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 if he does, he's in and out. I mean, I can't, or if he's in, you'll see him hit a couple spots and he's out. It's the over the ropes and then onto the floor is what loses me. Because I'm trying to think how, because he would have wrestled the night before, so he's on something at that point. He's still 63 years old. Those hips, those knees. And I how is that any different from when he wrestled in TNA and was bleeding all over the goddamn place? He was not. He was bleeding. He was not tumbling over a rope and having to land on the ringside. That, that's the only hang-up I have is eliminating him, unless you have him win the Rumble. <laughs> and he, he, ended up, <laughs> he ended up going over the ropes a few times in TNA. He... He yeah, ended up taking some past, big shots. Not within the past two or three years. And I and let's think. be fair. I mean, they could they can toss him like onto the apron. He can fall onto the apron and, and do that thing bumped. where all the heels like they 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 will hold onto that bottom rope trying to, to like to keep in, and then they can just push him off, and he'd drop you know what whatever that is four feet three feet whatever. And he won't. I, 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 yeah, there's there's opportunities there. I, I think I think it's definitely very very likely. And he won't be eliminated until he gets the crap beat out of him in the ring and does the trademark kind of flare face flop. The fair, the flare face plant. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I can't believe not. I, I, I'm, I'm not going to vehemently argue with you guys as we did over the Dolph, off the Dolph Ziggler cashing in and you flying the titles that David Jill tossed to us. But why do we get the craziest shit on Twitter? Anyway. Uh, uh, real quick, we did get a question from Robert in the live chat. Do we have time to do that now, or do you want to just move on? Uh, what do you think? Robert, Answer quick, so I like your question it. a lot, but... We can do yeah, it next week. It. It's not time sensitive. All right, Robert, we'll answer your question next week. Uh, we got a few things from Sorry, uh, social media. That's no, fine. Uh, it's fine by me. Uh, uh, basically, we asked on a uh, few of our social media things on Facebook and Google Plus specifically, uh, what if Undertaker's WrestleMania 23 opponent was against the Shield? Uh, Mike on Facebook suggested that he could see Ryback versus Taker versus the Shield, but not a straight handicap match. Uh, we, asked, we also asked, what if Jericho is behind the Shield? His last run was a bit of injustice on his career. We want to know what you guys thought. Uh, Andy on G Plus said that having anyone be the leader of the Shield outside of the three guys already involved would make the group look weak. Um, we also asked, uh, Kane currently holds the record for most eliminations in a single Royal Rumble at 11. I thought that was, uh... Oh. Hmm. Okay, for some reason I thought um, Hart, uh, Bret Hart had that. Anyway, uh, will or should Ryback break this? Uh, Lenike and Armani? Armani? Yeah, well, uh, and G Plus both like the idea, but both said it would be difficult accomplishment, and just about everyone on Facebook panned it, although they could see it happening, and Ryback could be the most logical sense to do so. Uh, Bradley Chambers even went as far as saying that no one should ever break the record until after Kane retires. Uh, since it's been over, a, we also asked, since it's been over a year since Cena was champion, is the idea of him holding the title in 2013 more, expect more acceptable? As expected... Everybody was against the idea. But Robin on Facebook noted that while he wasn't champ, the show still revolved around him. So really, what's the difference? Uh, and we also asked, should Zena use this, or I'm sorry, should Ziggler use Zena. the super kit as his finisher? Everyone who responded said absolutely they would love Ziggler to use the super kick. Uh, so that's the kind of stuff you can get involved in if you join us on Facebook and Google+, Plus. you know, interacting with the, the, just these awesome opinions and discussions that we have going. Some started by us. Some started, most of them actually started by you guys, and it's always a blast to see that happen. 
uh, from the award. And you know what? We're all award. I mean, it's all our award, really. So the award-winning discussions that we get from you guys. Uh, now it is time for win fail. Women wrestlers aren't getting paid. Why do you do a job? Here is your win. You do any <laughs> job, any job, and fail. Is to fucking get paid of the week. Wins of the week, and I, I'm. Should I go? No, you know what? Should I go last? Because mine is, mine is, mine is gonna floor you guys. Should I just lead off with that, or should I close it with it? You know what? I'll just kick it to go Rob ahead. first. We'll see what Rob says. Rob, what is your win of the week? Uh. My win of the week is going to be. Well, it's kind of an odd one. My win of the week is going to be the Impact Wrestler of the Year award because I like the fact that a wrestling company actually. Hang on, I'm going somewhere with this. I like the fact that a wrestling company actually took an award, said we're going to let our fans decide, and seems to have stuck with that. Ah, okay. You mean like John Cena winning Superstar of the Year in the Slammies? Yeah, but that's decided by the WWE. Uh, and I think it, it I think the evidence active. is they were they're. I think the evidence is pretty much the same on both sides of that one, Rob. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they they were pushing Raw active pretty heavy, uh, so it was uh, fans who were voting. Uh, yes, yeah, fans vote for WWE out. stuff, but W but the unwritten rule is that the WWE you reserves are. the right to overrule the fans. You as are, they've done on a few occasions. You are die hard, man. I you know what, Rob? I gotta applaud you on that, man. You are die hard, man. You are you're like every Patriots fan I know when they talk about how amazing Bill Belichick is, regardless of when he was caught cheating. They still said he was great. Oh no, I am not a I'm Bell not Trek saying you're a Pats fan. I know you're a Bears fan, but I'm just saying you're a diehard. Yeah, you will call T N A out when they when they do something up, but I just you know, I kinda applaud that that you would that you would even get out the scalpel and draw that line between them like that. All right, Garv, what's your win of the week? You Sorry, didn't have I'm one prepared? Still, Come on. It's like it's not like we do this every struggling week. with Rob's win of the of the Oh, just move past it. Uh, Shut up, Garv. I, just... I... <laughs> uh, no, my my win of the week is uh, a personal one. Um, the, the win of the week is uh, you know, just getting back into wrestling this week. Uh, you know, obviously a lot of us took two weeks off for the holidays and it was good to get back in the swing of things and we did the live chat for Raw, uh, we did the live chats for Impact as well uh, it was really fun so uh, yeah, I'm just glad to have wrestling uh, you know, and everything's back to normal Okay, uh, there are four horsemen of the apocalypse uh, and we had them tonight, uh, number one we won an award, a prestigious award, number two we seriously entertained the idea of Dolph Ziggler unifying the titles Number three, we believe Ric Flair is going to be in the Royal Rumble. And the fourth, Horseman of the Apocalypse, Harrison's win is Jerry the King Lawler. Jerry Lawler, the Carvin just left. <laughs> <laughs> On Raw, uh, Jerry the Carvin King Lawler. Carvin just throws down the headset and leaves. That was <laughs> awesome. On Raw. Jerry the King Lawler made a speculation on who would be the new Browns head coach. And he said, and I quote, I would like for the Browns to blah, blah, blah. In that one move, he made a more astute observation than this entire city has this entire time. All, every single sports news outlet in Cleveland has done is the Browns should. The Browns need. The Browns have. Not once did anybody say, I think, I like, or it would be great if they went with my opinion, opinion, and did this. And for that, Jerry the Clean Waller, you get my win of the week. And he's a huge Browns fan, so I got to give him props for that one. So look, I, hey, as I see it. I'm the biggest, I'm probably the biggest John. The, the only person I believe who would be a bigger king critic than me is an ex-wife, and I've never married him, so I'm going to say I'm second tier, but I call him like I see him, and he won. He, he got my win for Monday. <laughs> All right. Fails of the week. <laughs> I think God just gave Garvin a stroke. Your fail of the week. Uh, go, Rob. 
my fail of the week goes to TNA fans for picking Jeff fucking Hardy <laughs> as the wrestler of the year. <laughs> and that's the show. <laughs> well, there you go. All right, Garvin, your fail of the week. Go, Garvin. Uh, hmm, I guess, um, hmm, my fail of the week is going to be Kaz, and the reason is because, um, I finally figured out that the only time I like Kaz is when he's impersonating other people. He is Jay Lethal 2.0. I cannot believe you just said that. I have a new fail of the week. I have a new fail of the week. <laughs> no, but seriously. Uh, and that's problem, it. That's the show. Why don't you that Garvin, that's it. That's the show. Let's <laughs> head over to Garvin. Oh, my God. This this show, I cannot imagine a more batshit insane show than what we've had today. That we, we won an award. I gave Jerry Lawler a win of the week. We entertained the idea of unifying the title. You just said... Kaz was Jay Lethal 2.0. The idea that you would even say that. just Those words in that order. I Silent screaming. Silent screaming. That's the show. Oh, see what happens when Joe and Lee aren't on the buoy this? It's just the, the three crazies go off and we just, you know. And that's it. That's the show. You, know, you can check out fdwpodcast.com for more insanity about us and how to get involved in the future. Our new and tote swank site. Um, we've posted links on our iTunes page so you can rate us higher than any other wrestling podcast can possibly be rated. We want to get the six stars. Every other podcast is settling for five. Damn it, I want six. You got us an award, guys. We can get this done, too. Uh... <laughs> There are other links there as well as how to support us. Uh, we appreciate any help that we can get, obviously. Uh, remember to join us again this Thursday at 10 p.m. Eastern as we react to this week's uh, impact and preview Sunday's Genesis. should be a lot of fun. Uh, don't forget, the new t-shirt should be coming out next week sometime. Uh, so make sure to keep an eye on our Twitter, Facebook, and Google Plus feeds so you can find out when they're going out and when you can pick them up. Uh, thank you, everyone, in the live chat. Again, you guys are spectacular. Weasel 2.0. You guys are spectacular. We record every FTW podcast episode on Tuesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern, 1 a.m. Greenwich Mean Time at FTWlive.com. I don't want to do this anymore because I can't think of we're, we're all we're so far off the rails, we've we've derailed and took out the entire town. Garvin crashed us into an orphanage. There are burning children bodies with no parents everywhere because you said that Kaz was Jay Lethal 2.0. 